All right, we are live. Welcome, everyone, to the wild beyond the witch light. This is Tabletop Bob. My name is Bob. I'll be your DM for tonight. I have my lovely group here. We're going to uh, be playing episode two. It's been two weeks. How's everybody doing? Feeling good? Yeah, yeah, ready to get back to it. Excited to go back to the carnival. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. You know, we've been, uh, I've been doing a lot on the channel the last two weeks. A lot of live streams, a lot of recordings coming out. Just a, you know, just a list of few things. We have Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. That's on Tuesday nights. That's entering the, the final stages of the game. So if that's something you're uh, interested in seeing, if you're a DM for that campaign, maybe before you're going to go on to Wild Beyond the Witchlight. I'm going to suggest you take a look at this. Here's a promo here. You'll be able to see it because I turned on the camera for you all. Here's the promo. Look at this beautiful episode. We just had episode 50, everybody. The Rite of the Arcane Octid. That is in the city of Yithrin. The The group's there. They're ready to rock and roll. And I'm excited to see how that campaign ends. I don't know when exactly, but within the next month or two, it's, it's done. So hop on board to see the end of that. And we have something else coming out. Christian and Dasha, do you remember what we did last night? Oh, yeah. yeah I, think, I think I remember. It was such Boy. a blur. It was so yes. late. It felt like it was only like, you know, a couple hours ago. Yeah, it does. We, uh, well, we finished recording and the live premiere of the finale of Supernatural 20 season one comes out tomorrow and it's Ravenloft. Look at that. Just in time for Halloween. We're playing the classic tale, Ravenloft. Here we go. So that's Saturday, the 30th. Icewind mm -hmm. Dale, episode 51 on Tuesday. And then our lovable old school D&D &D group, the Keep on the Borderlands. That's on next Thursday, alternating with this show. So there's a lot of live streams going on here. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you should be hitting that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of these uploads. I also had a bunch of other recorded videos that came out this last week, like three or four of them, right? So let's keep this train rolling, and uh, we'll see everyone on all these streams. Yeah. All right, if so you want to watch uh, my character and Christian's character getting on each other's nerves a lot, watch Ravenloft. <laughs> exactly. That was, was a lot, a lot of, of that. Yeah, no, nothing like that in this game. Everybody loves the characters. No. Yes. They all love each other. <laughs> no, no, no. Very true. Well, Very respectful relationships. No, yeah, nobody a lot of gone, uh, was it cupcakes last week. That was yep. that didn't happen. These are relationships built on mutual trust, and <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, I oh, I don't know what happened there, but uh, we just lost our screen for a second. But we're good. I don't know uh, if that's necessarily the case with all the characters. If there's a mutual love or respect, to everyone. But I tell you what, these characters are definitely more fun. If you think about it, everything I've been streaming, my Avernus DM guides, it's all about going to hell. My Icewind Dale, it's the frigid north, it's cold, it's isolated, it's the everybody's miserable all the time. You got uh, the Ravenloft, I mean, don't get much more miserable than Barovia, and then we've got nice wild beyond the witchlight. We're, we're at a carnival. How could you? How could you dislike it? Yeah, you forgot the game full of old curmudgeons. <laughs> yes, and then the yes, and then. To keep on the borderlands, exactly old old curmudgeons, but I gotta be honest with you, they they actually pretty fun fun characters too. So, <laughs> all right. So today we're gonna introduce our characters. Let's start with Mike. Tell us who you're playing today. Oh, I'm playing Boppy. Everybody knows Boppy. Um, <laughs> no one knows Boppy. That's Boppy's problem. <laughs> Boppy is the glue that holds this group together. Um, he is just a joy to be around um absolutely the light of everybody's sky you know there's there's just when he's around everybody's happy um <laughs> but poppy's a pugilist who has yet to punch anything because we haven't got into any fights and i'm pretty sure if we did they're all at one health so this would not go very well i'm the only one who decided not to choke to death on cupcakes <laughs> yeah well maybe a little walk around the carnival helped pass some of the uh uh, get get rid of some of the cupcake weight, because right now you just did stuff yourselves. How many did you all eat? I, I think I had you at what ten or eleven or twelve, something like that. Custard a lot, damage. A lot of cupcakes. I think most of us crapped out around eight or nine, and then oh, eight or nine. Uh, 
uh, da- uh, Dasha made it much further. Yeah, she did. She did cheat a bit, though. I did. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, Dasha. Who are you playing today? Yeah, I'm playing Siggy. She's a uh, fairy rogue, so she's small, but she's mighty, and she likes to steal things and um, cheat sometimes. Uh, she can be sneaky. Um, she's very stealthy. Yeah, she ate a lot of cupcakes. She won the cupcake contest, so she's really, really excited to be here with this group of friends. She also got a bunch of bardic inspirations last time from Quentin, so she <laughs> wants to be friends with him some more, probably. Um, seems like a good person to stick around to get those benefits. And yeah, she's having a grand old time. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Everyone seems to be having a great time. No one's having a better time, though, than Christian. Christian has, has Boomy. Boomy's doing great. Boomy is the um, Adamar cleric. He's, you know, young guy, probably really early 20s. So he's trying to be the tough cleric maybe one day. But deep down, you know, he's still a kid at heart. So this carnival's sort of bringing that out. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, he's got all these skills and abilities to, uh, to be just that. His stats are amazing. <laughs> so we'll see how that works. And then last, we got... Uh, Randall, tell us about Quentin. Uh, Quentin Queen. Uh, he uh, is a human bard um, who's had some entanglements with the Fae um, and has made his way here after talking with a very uh, experienced and traveled um, warlock. Uh, and looking to get some some information on some on some some fey people some fey fey places and happen to encounter all of these people yeah he's on a very important quest here sent by magic we'll talk all about that in the recap and then mike i'm just going to show your character stats as well because i showed all the other characters and uh they're you know, they're nothing to be impressed about <laughs> they're nothing to no nothing to be impressed about but but they're solid you know we got boppy here and the pugilist can you just tell us where the pugilist class comes from yeah uh pugilist is a class made by benjamin huffman he's put out a bunch of stuff he's got a few other classes he put together they're all pretty well play tested um i i have to look it up i know it's being played on another stream somewhere that's got quite a few viewers so i'm not the first person to bring this on a live stream um but it's it's a different take on a character who punches things and yeah. is not a monk. So yep, I'm excited to see how how that plays out too when we finally get to combat, or maybe we won't. Maybe we'll have no combats because remember you could do that in this game. That is fair. Also, I saw char- I thought Randall's character's name was uh, was it Lightning McQueen? I, I <laughs> oh, Randall, we're gonna just rag on you all day today. All right, it's okay. I have a cantrip that can professionally make me rag on people. True. <laughs> that you do. It hurts people's feelings, okay? Yeah, me too. It's called fist. <laughs> fist. I don't All right. I don't think I want you to fist me. Uh... <laughs> mm. let's, let's not take mm. it in that direction. Mm. Remember, the carnival's for the family of all ages. Yeah. So... Keep it Everyone knows those carnies do weird stuff. And Boppy is it's definitely true. a weird carny. <laughs> also true. Very true. True words may never have been spoken. Mm-hmm. I, so, got, I gotta practice my voice, so I'm gonna Oh yeah, myself. you need to uh get some lemon and lemon water, some lozenges. Do you need me to get you a pack of cigarettes? Yeah. Just just chain <laughs> smoke them. <laughs> yeah. Well everyone I need, a, need a pack of uh, Marlboros and uh, a forty probably. No filters. There you go. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Just cut the filters off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who needs them anyway? So, uh, last we played, the group headed to the carnival, the Witchlight Carnival. Now, one thing I've been doing a little differently is I didn't with my Icewind Dale stream and other streams. I kind of, kind of put like a character focused video out where the, the viewers would like know. Well, there was secrets in that game that were created, right? So. That was kind of like part of it. I wanted the viewers to be in on the inside of that knowledge. All of you have very different backgrounds and reasons for being at the carnival, and we have not shared that with the audience. So um, just to recap, just the what they saw last time of you headed to the carnival, Randall came in first, right? Quentin uh, opened up the show meeting with Magic, the warlock, 
uh, who is very old, right? He's a retirement. He's not an adventurer anymore. And he needs you to go to a, a domain called Prismere. It's a domain of delight where his patron, the Archfey Zabilna, resides. He has lost communication with her over the last year or so, and he's getting worried. And being unable to travel himself, he hired you. Um, you have some experience working with the Summer Court, so you are going to be a, a co point of contact for him. Uh, then we went to the carnival itself, and we met Bumi. Uh, Bumi was headed to the carnival and was trying to figure out how to get in, went to the front of the carnival stall, met, um, met the little goblin Nicholas, and uh, Nicholas sold you a ticket, and then you met Siggy. Siggy came in and flew down. Siggy is a fairy, obviously, so Siggy was able to convince you to buy her a ticket, which was really nice. And then, after Boppy came to try to shoo away the fairy, Nicholas revealed that, in fact, a person paid for all three of your tickets, except for Boppy, because Boppy works at the carnival. A person named Ellie Wick Tumblestrum, a gnome bard that plays music all around the carnival. The group, uh, somewhat formed together, maybe perhaps over their um, uh, desire to find out who paid for their ticket, what grouped them together, and Boppy because he just hates his job and mostly hates his life. So he figured he'd come with you, along with his little sprite friend, Lemon, who now has a crush on uh, on Quentin. So, and Boomy. And, to be honest, pretty much everybody that Lemon meets. So that's where we're at. You went to the uh, cake eating contest because that's where you heard Ellie would be. You did see her, but after the cake eating contest, when you were all stuffed and bloated, she had disappeared. So I'm going to switch us over to our roll 20 scene so that people can see uh, where we're at on the map. But is there anything you'd like to say, any uh, part of the recap? Anything I missed? I did that good of a job? Okay, good. Did an amazing job. Yeah. I'm astounded. All right, excellent. Okay, here we go. Here's our roll 20 screen. I love this map. It's so vibrant and fun looking. All right, so welcome to the carnival. We are located right here at the feasting orchard. That's where the pie eating con or the uh, cupcake eating contest was. Now you looked around for Ellie, but she had gone away. A bunch of the other gnome bards started to uh, play a, a jig and. Some of you danced, some of you didn't. But now where to, everybody? Listen, there's a lot of places we could go around here. I, I recommend that if we want to find this musician, uh, of your friend of yours who's paid for your ticket, um, I don't know, maybe we should just walk down to the other side of the carnival. There's a few places we could stop and take a look. That sounds great, but what is that giant oyster dude? Clam. Pearl thing over there. Um, that Bobby, looks do, like I, more do I know what that is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's Silver Song Lake. It It's what feeds the rivers that flow around the carnival. Uh, I, I don't know. You're probably blind, but as you can see, it's a body of water. <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> I believe that he was referring to the actual oyster, not the lake that it resides in. Well, I mean, yeah, it's an oyster. Oysters live in water. What do you think you were going to find over there? Perhaps a smaller oyster, not one so gargantuan. Where do you think you are again? At the carnival. Oh, okay. What kind of carnival was this? I believe it's an angry washed up rabbit carnival. Oh, well, I mean, if you want to jump to that conclusion, sure, but I'm probably the only one of those here. I'm talking about a fairy carnival. You're surprised by a giant oyster? Man, you are in the wrong place, because there's freakier stuff here than that. Well, it seems that you work here and you don't even know what it does. <laughs> Listen up, I have one job. I clean up garbage, all right? <laughs> you want to know what that oyster is? Go climb it in yourself, and hopefully it doesn't clamp shut on you. Ah, I see. This conversation is happening. Siggy is kind of absentmindedly <laughs> floating off, flying kind of in the direction of the oyster, yep. around. Yeah, he'll just kind of look to Boomy, 
I suppose that means it's above his pay grade. We should probably just investigate <laughs> ourselves. Yeah, All right, yeah. Like... I'm, sh- I'm sure you're going to find the ugly gnome guitarist inside of the oyster. Go ahead, climb in there. Come on, let's go. I'm pumped. The idea of potentially getting trapped in there, fighting my way out seems like <laughs> I'm ready. What do you oh, what do you think this is? Coney Island? Here. This ain't Coney Island, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sugar high on the, on the custard. So yes, perhaps, custard. Yeah. Perhaps we should um, take it easy for a bit. I, I don't particularly want to fight a massive oyster. Why do you think you're gonna fight it? What is wrong with you people? <laughs> I don't know. He uh, apparently uh, Boomy here wishes to fight their way out of this. Uh, oyster. Actually, I haven't even really gotten a good look. Is it an oyster or clam? <laughs> um, I can tell um... you. <laughs> so I think uh, Siggy's. You, you were you following along, or are you doing something else? Yeah, I, I think she was just kind of like going in that general direction that they were talking about, and but like a little bit away from the group. Like she's looking around, like um, taking in the sights. Um, maybe it looks like she's looking for someone or something. But really, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm going to remind you guys of something. You wanted to become the the royalty of the festival, right? The the monarch or whatever it's called. You're not going to get that by spilling blood. You're supposed to be spilling juice, you know, joy and merriment. I thought you said juice. <laughs> I thought you said juice too. You're supposed to be spilling juice. I feel like don't I you know? Them. Come on. <laughs> At this point, Boppy has finished his cigar. He reaches into his back pocket. He pulls out a silver case, which he pops open and is just filled with more cigars. He takes another one out. All of his money went into that case. (laughs) Wait, you get paid for this? (laughs) I I honestly didn't think he was actually smoking it. I thought it was just like a like kind of like old, like wet cigar just hanging out of your mouth. No, no, it was lit. It was lit. He's, he's <laughs> lit. Yeah. puffing on it. He's been puffing. You see all the smoke around the carnival? That's that's Bobby. <laughs> that's all <laughs> that's, smog that's from a, Bobby. That's fairy magic. That's literally Bobby <laughs> yelling cigar smoke. How easy would it be for, you know, Siggy judging the situation to steal that silver cigar holder? Probably hard because Bobby, it's his most prized possession, I would imagine. Okay. I'll keep an eye on it. Also, yeah. does Boppy have pants? Like, like what? Yes. <laughs> Bobby, okay. Boppy is wearing like a patchwork clown costume right now. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. And he's got wings. Remember, fairy wings that are tied to his back. Very true. That's very true. Um, all right. So you head over this little bridge here. And before you get to the Gondola Swan, you are oh, sorry, the uh, Silver Song Lake, you see a dock. That's labeled Gondola Swan. Enormous swans glide through the water here, and you can see that these gondolas are draped in flowers. The swans uh, disappear into the banks of the silver mist as they wind their way down the river. Uh, a jetty extends ahead, at the end of which waiting, a waiting swan preens its feathers. So these swan rides are actually real swans. Just large, giant swans. Um, and then you can see that the the dock that's here where the swan is waiting kind of looks out over the Silver Song Lake. Although you can continue past this to get to the to get to a better view of the clam. Is um is there like a dock worker or do these swans talk? <laughs> um, so there is uh, no dock worker. The swans are the dock workers. They they are they're like their own Ubers. Nice. More are they unionized? <laughs> they might be. They're like the NYC cab cabbies. Yeah, oh man, you don't want to mess with them then. <laughs> they well, can I mean, take you anywhere that you want. Yeah, if, if, if these are like cabbies, they're probably not swans. They're probably looking at geese. <laughs> Just geese painted white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cab looks nice on the outside, but um, each gondola so you can see is a, again pulled by a real giant swan. They have massive beaks. They look like they could do some serious damage if they wanted to. We have to pay to ride. Nothing around you is free. All right, Cupcake, go ahead and punch one of your tickets if you want to get on one of those things. Oh, please don't say the word Cupcake. 
Oh, yeah. that's right. You know, you still got some of that on your back. I think you missed it. <laughs> Did some do that on my back? Oh, I don't know. You were the, the one eating it. Probably some of your A lot face. happened after you, you passed out first. He, he just, like, kind of, like, takes off his, his overcoat and is just down to, like, his tunic and, and just, like, looks at... What's happened? <laughs> it's probably got a big, like, handprint in it. <laughs> do do your like, hands look like normal hands, or are they, like, bunny paws? I, I, bunny I, I, would have had, I think they're normal hands. I don't think they're bunny paws. If I just see a massive rabbit paw on my back, I'll know who did it. I guess it's not a paw, you're right, but it's definitely furry. It's definitely, like, rabbit-like. <laughs> How is that a hand? That's not mine. I can't reach that far. Uh, must have been uh, the person running the contest. They were checking on you. Oh. Siggy flies up and tries to... She has a little, like, handkerchief. She'll try to wipe it, and it doesn't work. Oh, say, oh I, th I think you're smearing okay. that. <laughs> Here, it's all right. Wait, it's wait, all one right. wait one second. <laughs> no, no! <laughs> and he just... He's gonna try to catch the spit before it lands on the, on the coat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boppy's nasty. <laughs> Just like smacks the deflect oh, and, missiles, and, and, the spit. <laughs> this spit is like nasty looking because he's smoking a cigar. Oh, so it's like, oh, it's like Who black eat? tar. <laughs> You're a disgusting <laughs> rabbit. As you, you uh, as you clean up down. the spit. Yeah, exactly. You wipe it down. You can now see the pier, beyond the pier, the oyster that you were looking at. Mist gathers at the banks of the shimmering lake near its center. You can see a mermaid lounging in a giant bowl, singing a glorious, haunting song that captivates spectators on lake shore. In response, the lake uh, uh, water coalesces into a magical sculpture that whirls around her as she performs. Um, you know this person as Palasha, Bobby. Palasha. Yeah, you've right. never... Um, You've never probably spoken to her. Uh, most people in her. the carnival would consider her very beautiful. She kind of has a uh, Little Mermaid vibe going on. She's got uh, flowing black hair, the seashell uh, bikini. Um, do I know like what she exactly does or not really? She's a singer. She's a singer. Mm -hmm. She entertains. They do. They do shows here. It's like the uh, the Bellagio, that sort of uh, water water uh, effects here. Yeah, and, I've been to the Bellagio. <laughs> uh, yeah, and she's uh, she's also. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? You know that she's uh, dating someone here in the carnival, and you don't know why. This guy's a freak. His name is. Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry. His name J Candlefoot. His name is oh. Candlefoot. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be the, like, dickbag giant clown guy. <laughs> so he's a, no, he's a mime. He's a mime. He's a mime. She's dating a mime. Yeah. Oh, it's somehow good. worse. He so, so much he, worse. You actually work with him quite often because during the Big Top extravaganza, you carry all of his mime equipment, which is, which is basically is nothing. But You're a him. mime, Rody. Is, is he a silent mime? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's why she dates him. This is a girl who likes to talk way too much, and he can't talk back. <laughs> no, 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 oh, no, I was no, thinking no, wait, wait. that she's so she's so annoyed by most people constantly trying to talk to her that she doesn't want somebody that can speak. No, no, no. She just wants somebody. Well, yeah, she doesn't want somebody who can speak because then she could take up all the airtime. No, I'm no. gonna turn and I say, she, no, wait, no, wait, no. Wait. She wait, wait, what? hold on. She, you know, he can speak. In his performance, he doesn't. Okay. You work with him though when you perform at the big top. So it, it actually in in another like hour or so, you're gonna have to go to the big top because the performance is gonna happen. Okay. She really likes it, guys, when you tip her by throwing coins at her as hard as you can. All right, give it a shot. Go. That go doesn't that doesn't sound accurate. <laughs> but I should be uh, looking my best. And he's gonna he's gonna start casting his prestidigitation to clean the back <laughs> of his coat uh, while while listening to the singing. Perhaps you know not. what? I bet you, uh, little uh, fairy creature, I, I don't remember your name and I really don't care, but if you uh, fly over there, I bet you you could find some coins scattered in the water people give to her. My name is Siggy, and I'm not going to do that. All right, Siegfried, you sure you don't want to go check that out? Siggy will 
uh, cross her arms over her chest and, and fly up in the air, looking very... You know how when Tinkerbell gets mad? Like, it's like... Oh, it's, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> it's like, turning red. She, like, she knows you're messing with her. She's not stupid. Um, she'll fly over to Boomy and, and Quentin and far away from you, Poppy. She'll be like, stick her tongue out at you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's all right. His words carry more stench of booze than they do insults. <laughs> I got some. You, you need a sip? <laughs> I got I got, so, I got a nice little, uh, he like reaches into his pocket. He pulls out a little flask and he uh, gives it a little shake. I, of course he has a flask. Honest, I honestly cannot imagine what terrible vile liquid resides in that flask vile. that you keep in there. You know, some of the boys in the Big Top brew this stuff up. It's actually, you know what, it doesn't taste very good. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't imagine so. Siggy so will uh, fly closer to Quentin and say, perhaps she'll know where the bard is? You could talk to her? She is perhaps. a singer. And she, you said she's she's like in the clam? or She's in, so uh, the, the, the lake is magical, right? So the mm-hmm. lake basically is moving around it's got like a water show magical sculptures whirling around as she performs she's uh there is a large clam on like an island there but it's more decorative she's kind of off to the side she's in like a very large bowl um what's the name of the bard you guys are looking for again eliwick eliwick okay i'm gonna turn to lemon i'm gonna say hey lemon uh, I bet you if you find Eliwick and you let us know where she is, I bet you Sir Pretty Pants over there might give you a little smooch. Oh, yeah? You think so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he might do that. You know, he's pretty desperate. I'd be honored. All right, why don't you go see if you can find Eliwick? She uh, says to the group in a loud voice, I, um, I think I'm going to go find Eliwick. And she winks at Quentin. Thank you, Lady Lemon. That, that but I'll only helpful. do it for a kiss. <laughs> a kiss? What are we done? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Sure. Ever the gentleman. It would be absolutely my pleasure. So she puts out her tiny little cheek for a kiss. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but just before I want to ask, in comparison of size, <laughs> my my lips are basically the size of her entire head, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, she might be like a little bigger than that. I, I think. Okay. okay. I think she might be like under a foot, but yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I, I was picturing kind of like Tinkerbell size. Yeah, okay, but I don't. So, I don't know. So actually. a bit bigger. A bit bigger. Sprite. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure I'm not like 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 giving a peck on the cheek isn't like fully enveloping her face. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're actually they're actually a little bigger than that. They are under two under two feet tall. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so he he would um, very politely go up and uh, just kind of like use a, a finger to just push a little bit of the hair away from the cheek and give a very polite peck on the cheek. Oh, so tender and cute. When you when you do that, she does a fake out and she. Pulls her face forward so you kiss her right on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> and she buzzes about, and you can see like 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 a uh, like heart energy like emanating from her as she flies up into the air. And she's like, Yo! She's gone. She's like off into the distance now. Siggy Wait. has her eyebrow raised and is like, someone's desperate. <laughs> I wish I could say that was the first time that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> she also uh you smell the, the the very fresh scent of lemon all around you now it's like an orchard a, le- a lemon orchard here <laughs> my part of me is probably actually audible like she's just like laughing yeah <laughs> actually it smells quite nice uh, it I... does <clears throat> um so the the water show is going on in fact it's starting to pick up a lot of people are coming here to watch it most people are are really cheering her on, and it seems like, um, well, what you know of her, Bobby, she does, she she has a bit of a, a bit of a confidence issue. If, if there's any sort of mistake that she makes, she ends up uh, having a bad show. You hear all about it. Everyone around the carnival hears all about it. 
Um, so she's doing great. She's singing perfect, perfect pitch here. Uh, the water spectacle is is uh, moving around, and people are cheering at the shapes that are being made. And then all of a sudden, you hear uh, a very deep voice, very deep voice. It actually, to be honest with you, kind of sounds like Candlefoot. He's got this very smooth, rich, velvety voice in in his normal life, and then no voice when he's a mime. And you hear it, and he says, Hey, come on. Is that the best you could do? My grandmother sings better than this. And uh, she's continuing to sing, but it, it's definitely causing her to lose concentration. And, and then all of a sudden, she she's flat on a note here. And then she forgets the words for a moment, and then catches herself. You can see her looking over, looking out into the into the into the uh, crowd to look for Candlefoot. She can't find him. Can I do a perception check? Yes. Is you can. Candlefoot Candlefoot's the mime? The mime, yeah. Damn. And what? Sorry, remind me what the, what what, it, what was the, the the mermaid's name again? The mermaid's name? Yeah. Her name was Palasha. Palasha. Nice. I do not see him. Uh, what'd you oh. get? I got a four. a four. Even though I am even though I'm proficient in, in perception, it is a plus zero. <laughs> okay. Dasha, what were you saying? Can I fly up over the crowd and see if I can find the mind? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so you fly up into the sky, and I'm not going to have you roll or anything. I'm not going to have you roll anything. So you okay. get up high from the, that vantage point, and, and you, can, you can hear where the, uh, the sound is coming from. And you can see there's a very animated creature. It is a bird-like creature. Uh, it's a kenku. And this kenku is got a very large cloak on. You can only see most of the beak, mostly the beak that's uh, revealing. And this, this, bir this bird is heckling the mermaid, saying awful things, things that I can't even say here on stream. Uh, are the other people in the audience paying attention to that, or...? Yeah, the people immediately around the Kenku, which is why uh, Bobby probably couldn't see, because there were so many people here at the, the edge of the lake. The people that are around that uh, creature are actually kind of look, look a little disappointed, and now they look out and they say, yeah, 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 they mumble, and yeah, yeah, sing on key, or play, put that shape again, or, you know, play... Play, don't play 80s Joel and they're like you know really upset and now more people are starting to heckle rather than cheer I'll fly back to the crowd and I'll say there's a Kenku there that's not being very nice um, I think she's upset <clears throat> what? the Kenku do you mind the Kenku or the, this out? are you talking about the Kenku or the mermaid the Kenku is being mean and the mermaid is upset oh gotcha okay. yes yeah I'll point him out what? Are they, how far away is this Kenku from us? I don't know, maybe 30 feet away, but through a crowd. Yeah, uh, so okay. you want to grab onto someone, maybe like Bumi's like collar and just like fly and drag him along. Not like she can't actually pick him up, but she'll like <laughs> lead him through the crowd. I, this, this whole time I've been like fumbling to find like the ticket to see if I have enough punches to go see this lady. Cause I just see her in the distance and I'm like, I wanna, I need to go there. Uh, completely oblivious to everything else right now. Um, so I can imagine Siggy's like trying to drag me and I'm just kind of like, what, what, where are we going? Yeah, I mean, once, once she points out the Kanku, I'm going to go right to the Kanku. Shit. Sure. <laughs> so, so the three of you, Randall, what is Quentin doing? He was going to go to the Kanku. Oh, he's going to Kanku. I have a feeling Boppy's going to go to the Kanku a bit more aggressively than, than Quentin would, but he would, he would go with, he would, he would go with everybody. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so yeah. you head to the uh, the heckler, uh, and you see. I'm gonna actually show you. Mm, I don't know if I want to show you the artwork on Roll Twenty because sometimes that gives you like the names and stuff like that. And I don't want to do that. So I'm just gonna tell you what this creature looks like. I guess mostly like a a crow. All right, so that's you know the Kenku are bird people. So kind of like Boppy's a rabbit person. This is a this is a crow. Um, it is a, a female uh, Kenku who has mostly I said, most of the body covered uh, by a cloak, but wearing white and gold butterfly wings. 
And the Kenku is mimicking the voice of your friend, well, not your friend, your co-worker, uh, Candlefoot, perfectly, and is hurling insult after insult at the mermaid. Um... All right. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Obviously, I approach the Kanku, and uh, Boppy's gonna look at him and say, "I know that voice. You gotta cut this out, or I'm gonna toss you right into the lake." Hey, baby. I ain't looking for no trouble. Oh, I forgot Kanku's talk like this. <laughs> yeah, you're making trouble. You're making a lot of trouble right now. You're gonna leave this area. Don't bother the pretty lady. He says, yeah, uh, what he uh, said. I'm in the back now. Like, watching yeah. him, still yeah. watching the government. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be heckling her if she could sing on key. She's terrible. And most of the people around agree now. And Palasha has just taken a nosedive in this performance. Oh, yeah, let's hear you sing, buddy. Come on. The Kenku goes into, like, a, <laughs> a, like a, very, a very nice jazzy voice and starts to sing like some song really really well it's it's mimicking a tune that it's heard before so you know this is a bit unfair show uh, us but, what's that show us <laughs> we need to hear how he's singing this song oh you know and a <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight and it goes into dances <laughs> and it's great and everybody around is now watching the kenku not the mermaid and now that everybody's watching, I'm going to pick the Kenku up and throw him into the lake. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go into combat here. <laughs> it only took two episodes, everybody. <laughs> you can get through this entire campaign with no combat, they said. <laughs> Not when you're with Boppy. Not when you're I with thought you Boppy. wanted you wanted combat, Bobby. I said that's what the whole point. <laughs> yeah. No, Bobby's actually not looking for a, a fight. Bobby's actually trying to really defend the uh, the mermaid here. He's actually trying to do something nice. Fair enough. All right, roll initiative, everybody. Hmm. Oh wow, some high rolls, folks. Hmm. Weird, mine didn't roll. Physically, yeah, I see yours. You got a seventeen. Well, it just didn't. It didn't do the the three D dice roll for some reason. Make sure it's set up with the settings. Oh, huh. it says it is. I see fifteen for Bobby. Yep. Quentin, 17. I see seventeen. 17. Yeah, yeah, looks like looks right. Uh, Dasha, I see Siggy got a twenty-two. Mm-hmm. And. Boomy in 11. Yep. All right. So, Siggy, you're up first. What do you do? Um, how far is the mermaid from us? Um, you know, probably she's uh, she's deep in the deeper water. So maybe let's say let's say 60 feet. Okay. Um, I don't think Siggy's going to fight because she's just not. That's not her. She's not going to immediately attack. So she's actually going to float on over to the mermaid, like double move. Mm -hmm. Can she fly double move? Yes. Okay. Um, she'll fly over to the mermaid, and can she say something, or is the double move? You can't take an action, but you could you could say something, a quick word or two. You know, you can uh, you can shout at her if you need to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll get hopefully get close enough, and I'll just um, try to motivate her a little bit. Be like, it's okay. Some guys are idiots. Just ignore him. Keep singing. She's, uh, you could tell she's wet from the water around her, obviously, but you see tears also streaming down her, her cheeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see how she reacts to you next turn. Mm -hmm. um, then we go to Quentin. Now, just so you know, is this, did, has Boppy already, like, thrown the Kenku? <laughs> I think at or this point we'll say Boppy is grabbing the Kenku, and that's when combat starts. Okay. Um... He's going, he's going to, he's going to just, um, I want to say he's going to hold his action, but I don't, I don't know if he would know, he wouldn't really have something to hold per se. Um, he would, he would, uh, 
if somebody if somebody does something aggressive, he's gonna hold a vicious mockery. Um, like if somebody if somebody like actually attacks um, some someone, he's gonna uh, he, he'll hold his vicious mockery for that. Okay, so in case somebody were to get attacked, that's when you're yeah, gonna do it. Yeah, okay. physically physically attacked, he's gonna he's gonna hold his vicious mockery. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, and then let's go to Bobby. I guess I'm grappling him. You are grappling the Kanku, yes. Yep. That's uh, athletics? Yep. Total? 20? Yep. Successful with the grapple. So you, you grab onto the cloak of this Kanku, and uh, she's not going anywhere right now. All right. And when I do that, I'm going to say, sing now, bird. Let's hear some singing now. Uh, do you want to move her into the... Did you want to, like, throw her in the water? Yeah. I mean, if, if I could do that in the same turn. I would say if you wanted to move with her, you'd have to get in the water, too, then. So maybe next turn you could push her. Yeah, I'm because I'm, I'm not trying to drown her. It's not like I'm walking into the water and holding it under the water. <laughs> You're going to sleep with the fishes tonight. <laughs> All right, fine. That's fair. So you well, let's get that beak wet of yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not singing now. Why you ain't singing now? <laughs> we just is becoming Mopsy. mafia. Mopsy's a mobster. <laughs> yeah. It's just full Sopranos after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the creature goes next. Uh, the Kanku goes next. Uh, she says uh, in that deep, deep, soft, velvety voice of, of Candlefoot. Oh, come on, baby. Why don't you take a nap? And smoke starts to emanate from her hand. You're now engulfed in this cloud of smoke. Give me a constitution saving throw. All right, all right. That's at least something I'm decent at. Don't we all have like one HP or something? No, I, I am I am more than you guys. Okay. I was I stopped eating. You you the second I I took damage, I was like, okay, I'm not doing this. That's true. Oh yeah, that's a good point, but Bobby. How much health do we have if we passed out from the custard damage? Do we still have like our full health? So. So I think you're at one. You need to walk off that custard damage. Okay. In time, you'll go back to your normal. All right. Let's go to. Uh, so that was that was successful. Uh, the gas covers you like a cloud, and you're mostly your like your head, right? Kind of. She mm -hmm. pointed her hand right at your head. Um, there is still this gas that you are choking on. It feels uh, unpleasant to you as you breathe it in. Although, I guess maybe you're used to a lot of toxins. Yeah, part of me was about to say, I'm smoking something stronger than that. <laughs> All right, so you're fine. You're fine. We go to uh, Boomy. Um, would that constitute an attack? Like, would that have looked I'll let you decide. To the, I'll let you like... decide. It definitely didn't look like it hurt him, but it's a big cloud of smoke on him. I don't know. I'll let you decide. If it didn't look like it hurt him, then then, then no. If it, if it just looked like a like like poof, like like of smoke, then yeah, you wouldn't. It's a puff of smoke. Mm -hmm. Boomy. Uh yeah. After seeing Siggy fly over, I'd probably use my movement to get as close as I can, and I'm gonna try this. I feel like I would wanna try to help save the show, um, to get the attention back on the mermaid. So I think I would find like a, a rock or a pebble if there might be one nearby and um, cast light on it um, or some something nearby that I could cast light on have it be like multicolored and I could like reflect it or move it around so it kind of looks like a cool light display is coming to the show to kind of be like this is oh you want to add to the performance I see yeah. okay <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how I would if I could do that yeah, let's um, let's do it. Why don't you why don't you give me so you're casting the spell, right? Yeah, as a cantrip light. Um, okay. So then give me a performance check to see if you could illuminate one of the water statues to make it look a little bit more grand. Go ahead. Cool. Uh, so a fifteen? Yeah, so you, you light up one of the water statues and the, the light that goes through it reflects and breaks off in different ways. And the rest of the crowd that's now, uh, well, I guess a lot of the crowd is actually watching a little bit of the scuffle, but the rest of the crowd that was still into the performance is now pointing, oh, look, look at that. And and that seems to be taking a little bit of the edge off of Palasha, who's now gaining a little bit of confidence back. 
All right, now we go to top of the order, Siggy. Uh, did she react at all to what I said? Um, yeah, she she's when you said to her that some guys can be jerks, or whatever. She goes, I just I, we I've had a big fight with my boyfriend, and he's been so mean to me lately. I don't understand it, and now he's heckling me. I don't even see him here. Well, it's not him. It's a Kenku and. What did you fight about? Well, he stopped talking to me. Probably because he's a mime. For... <laughs> he just had to go to work. <laughs> for no reason. Say it again. I could hear you. Stop talking for no reason. Yeah, he just gave me the cold shoulder, and I've been so good to him. <laughs> Everyone's having a battle, and these two are just having girl talk over <laughs> in the water. And she says, hold on, here's my part. And she goes yeah. into the big crescendo. Um, um, what do you say to her before she goes into the, the big one? Girl, you don't need it. I'm joking. <laughs> girl, you, you go, go, girl. Man. You're too good for him. You are a strong, strong independent, independent woman. <laughs> Give me a uh, persuasion check to see if you can boost her confidence. Yeah. Yeah, she will say exactly that, except in her little mini Irish accent. Um, your persuasion, you said? Mm -hmm. In 11, she seems to, she nods right before belting out that last note and it comes out crisp and clean, perfect way to finish the show. And everyone that's on the shore that's not watching the scuffle applauds. Uh, but the fight is starting to take up a lot more of people's attention. We go to Quentin. Um, so, so what, what is the Kenku doing in, in Bobby's um, grip right now? The Kenku is like Bart Simpson being strangled by Homer right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so nothing necessarily aggressive. No. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, he's, he's just grabbing him, right? He's not he, like, he just hasn't grabbed. He's not like, like actually strangling him no with his little uh with his little rabbit paws yeah with his little little rabbit toe beans um Man, a boxer these are some hefty fists <laughs> um he's gonna he's gonna just walk walk up to 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 bobby put a hand on bobby's shoulder put a hand or sorry put a hand on bobby's back put a hand um on on the the kenku's shoulder and just kind of hold eye contact with the kenku and he's gonna look you know, you're really being quite rude. You should, you should go sing the praises of this wonderful Palasha for the and until the end of your days. And he's gonna cast Charm Person on uh, on the the Kanku. Okay. It's wisdom or charisma. I forget. Wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. Charisma is like for teleportation. Fifteen. In total. Makes it. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so, so wisdom, right? Th wisdom 14. Oh, that's right. You have an 18 in your stat, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, even if I had a 15, it would still would have made it, so. True, um, true, true, true. So the, the Kenku is able to withstand the charm, and then it's the... No, it's Bobby's turn. Yeah, I'm just going to throw him into the water. Okay, yeah. give me an athletic <laughs> check. He just backs up. He's like, well, that didn't work. Go I'm ahead. I'm going to give you advantage on this because you're <laughs> strangling this poor creature. 20. 20? Yep. Yeah, looks like you, you win. Yep, you push the Kenku into the water and everyone starts to laugh at the Kenku as it's covered in, in the uh, in like little bits of seaweed and, and it's just soaking wet. And everyone laughs. Kenku gets up, shakes off the water, and then sloshes through to the to the edge. And then hops on one of the gondola swans. Unless you want to stop it. No, I'm not going to stop okay. it. Okay. And he says, later losers in <laughs> in uh, Candlefoot's voice. Now, if uh, I'm correct, he can mimic the voice, but he has to hear the exact phrase, right? Correct. Yes. Which mm -hmm. means Candlefoot has actually said all of this stuff. That would that would be 100% accurate. Yes. All right. Man, Candlefoot is a piece of work. All right, so Boomy, you see the 
the Kenku hop into one of the gondola swans. In fact, there's a, a, probably a, a nice little, you know, like a nice couple behind or family in the gondola and the swan's pulling it. He jumps right on the swan. The swan freaks out a bit and people start to fall over into the water. <laughs> what do you do? Um, how's the crowd reacting to when Bobby did this again? They're all cheering for him? Yeah, you know... It's, it's kind of interesting. You're looking around and all the people here are, they were really into the water show. And while Palasha finished strong, the emotion right now around here is kind of a bit, a bit of a, a downer. You can actually see the faces on the people that are, that are sad, that are upset by this fight. The color looks like it's been removed from them. They're just muted. Everything around this carnival has been so bright and vibrant. And now it's kind of a muted tone. Do I have a way of getting in touch with uh, Thacko? Um, not really. And in fact, I think we said this, you really despise don't him. Like, he gives yeah, you the creeps. Like <laughs> Can I leave him a message so I don't have to see him? <laughs> you know who you could talk to, though? Yep. There is someone who's a uh, witch light hand who you, you've talked to a few times. I wouldn't say you're friends. Are you really friends with anybody? Uh, but uh, Burly. He's a bugbear who always wears a big pumpkin mask on his head. Okay. He's He seems like somebody who might be able to know where to, uh, what to do in a scenario like this. Where is he usually? He's usually over by the, uh, the big top okay. and the staff area. How much time has passed? Are we near the uh, big top show? Yeah, you've only got like a half an hour left before the show, so you might have to get back soon. All right. Um, I'm going to turn to the rest of the group and I'm going to say, listen, we got the show coming up soon, so we might want to head over to the big top. I imagine you guys probably want to see that. Plus, I'm thinking I want to report this Kanku. I'm not particularly pleased about what has happened here. Uh, what do you think? With the mermaid. Is, like... there, is there another show that the, that the, that the Palosha is going to be performing? I imagine she's probably got some stuff after the Big Top show later, yeah. Oh. I feel like before I leave, seeing that everyone's down and knowing that she finished strong, I'd be, like, cheering, like, Encore, Encore, yeah. to try to, like, rile up the group um, to see if maybe I can get enough people to start cheering for an Encore that she will then sing one last little tune before we walk away. Give me a persuasion check. Could I, I? I would. I would like to clap along and, and cheer with him if if that can give him advantage on that. Yeah, if the group cheers along, yeah, I would say you can you can do it. All right, with advantage. Oh wow! <laughs> Totals, <Wow>. Christian. <laughs> uh, a five and then a six. <laughs> so. Yeah, Boomy. Well, you're welcome what is he for that advantage. <laughs> <laughs> what does Boomy say when he with this with a six? He's, he's, he's just like he's saying like encore, encore but he like doesn't realize he's like walking he's like tripping over something and maybe he's like kind of like gets his yeah. foot wet he almost like falls off the boardwalk a little bit he's causing um, more of a commotion than anything yeah just my attempt to bring attention to her is actually causing more attention yeah, to I, I'm gonna look at him and say you're making a fool of yourself <laughs> come on let's go I'm gonna, I'm gonna ash the uh, the cigar put it out and I'll tuck it into my ear <laughs> I'm completely right. like I feel completely defeated and embarrassed that I just you know embarrass myself in front of this mermaid. Yeah, you're better, you're, you're better at cleaning up trash than you are cheering people up. All right, <laughs> maybe just stick with me. It, it was a nice sentiment, for me. <laughs> I'm just like completely like half in love with her <laughs> after hearing the song. Like, can I get the mermaid to swim over with me to where everyone is standing? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, so when, when we had our, like, girl talk moment, and I've been like, girl, you're beautiful, like, all that stuff. You don't need no man. I'll be like, come meet my friends. They're really nice. Uh, I think one of them can make you feel better. Um, she's thinking, oh, Quentin gave Lemon a kiss and made Lemon really <laughs> happy. Maybe I'll give her a kiss. <laughs> So, Just turning we're, Quentin into a kissing booth. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're turning you into the stereotypical bard. You may not have wanted to be it, yeah. but here we yeah. are. Choice. Now I'm becoming it, I guess. Lean over to Bobby and like, we should start charging for this. <laughs> so, oh, 
Ziggy will swim over with <laughs> the mermaid. We might have an act here for a guy like you. <laughs> you open up a booth. <laughs> so, Ziggy, um, she says, you know, you have a wonderful voice, too. Have you ever tried singing? Oh, no. Not me. No singing. Just no, talking. come on. You're a natural. The way you were, the way you were uh, kind of uh, helping me gain my confidence sounded like you had a, a lovely voice. Let's let's hear it. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's not you, Dasha. It's Siggy. So you know, how, know. Does, how does Siggy sing? Um, I don't know. I don't know what she would sing. I don't know if she knows any songs. Twinkle, twinkle, <laughs> little yeah. star. Sing me, the, sing me a, a easy one. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> Row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat <laughs> down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh, I love it. She splashes up into the air and goes back down under the water and comes up and says, you have a natural talent. Here's what you do. And she starts to coach you. She's mm-hmm. like, you know, you got to put your, your you got to bring your neck up to get into this position. You got to, from the diaphragm, you got to, belt out that 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 high c or whatever she's you know going into musical um Mm -hmm. theory here but she's giving you a quick little lesson as you're flying and swimming over Mm -hmm. to the group all right so she gives you this quick lesson and both of you approach the group probably singing some sort of tune and Mm -hmm. the group uh see you see the two of them coming over singing in unison what do you do we're harmonizing row 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 your boat like we've remixed it it sounds great right (laughs) In the off verse, you're, she's doing a different a different tune, right? You're going back and forth. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, group, you see the two of them singing and approaching. What do you do? I go up to the the shore. It's your chance, Boomy. Get a get a good word in. <laughs> and I by the like, way, don't forget she's dating somebody. <laughs> yeah, a loser. Not for long. Really, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> Christian starts singing. Is she really going out with him? Girl, I feel like I'd be like, the bad guys want. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'd be like bobbing my head as like hearing them sing. And he's, just he's, like... gonna, he's gonna rewrite that Avril Lavigne song. Yeah. <laughs> that's like scared boy. Oh. I don't. I don't like your boyfriend. Stefano is making fun of us as he's a music teacher. <laughs> he's making fun of us in the chat, mostly me. But yeah, yeah. Sing for sing sing from the from the heart. Okay, that's what she's telling you. That's not bad advice anywhere. Yeah. Speaking of the heart, uh, these are my friends. Uh, Quentin, Boomy, and then this guy. Um, <laughs> you don't need to introduce me. I know her. She says, uh, hi, are, are you uh, having a good time at the carnival? She goes, shake your hand. I am now. Okay. No, no, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby. Oh. That's definitely, I would assume that's all towards me, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. okay. That, no, she's that like, was hi, hi, perfect hi, hi. in character. That, that was great. <laughs> she's oh, like, no, 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 totally no, no. To the side. Yeah, yeah, that's she's always, like, always no, so no, awkward. I'm talking to him. Um, are you new here? Have I met you before? I, I, Boppy just looks at her and says, yeah, Cupcake, I'm new here. I haven't been working with your boyfriend for the last ten years. Oh, you know my boyfriend? You know Candlefoot? Yeah. Tall, dark, and silent. That's the one. Yeah, him. Yeah, what is going on? So you, you, are you friends? He's never talked about you. No, I don't <laughs> imagine he has. Nobody ever does. All right, listen. The guy heckling you wasn't your boyfriend. There was a kanku impersonator. All right, cheer up. All right, sweetheart, everything's fine. What? So that big fight when I was yelling at him before by the Hall of Illusions? That was... <laughs> Bobby actually starts laughing. <laughs> I... <laughs> that wasn't him, but it was him. He was there. We, we, were, we were arguing. It was Candlefoot. Wait a second. You thought you had a fight with him in the Hall of Illusions. You know that's the name of the attraction, the Hall of Illusions. <laughs> no, no, no. We weren't in the hall. We were just outside of it. You're positive it was him outside the hall? I, yes, of course. On my shells. Swear on it. Well, I don't know what you got going on with uh, Littlefoot or whatever his name is. 
I can tell you, the person who was heckling you here, you you here, it wasn't it wasn't him. It it was a kink. It was an impersonator. Oh dear, I'm so confused. And she runs uh, her don't hand worry, over I for handled it. it. I threw him into the lake. Everything's fine now. Oh, so you okay. Give her a big hug so she feels better. If you don't mind me asking, the things that you heard the kanku yelling at you, did they sound familiar? Like you had heard them in the argument you had with Candlefoot? Well, you see, that's the thing. He stopped talking to me. I didn't... When we had the argument, I just kept yelling at him because he wouldn't respond. Oh. Have, have you thought about potentially seeking help with a therapist? Maybe he's not talking to you because of this fight. Maybe you started this, you know? I just think about it. I would <laughs> never. Did you... And I don't mean this to be to pry, but... Did you happen to touch... Candlefoot, during this argument at all? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I was mad, but, so I wasn't going to hug him, but, I don't know. Well, I've had a bit of experience think, I mean, I, with... Poppy's going to turn towards Quentin. He said, if they're arguing, why are they going to touch each other? Nobody's getting ready for a smooch during a fight, all right? What do you, you don't what have to kiss about? to touch. Can, you ask, a touch you said, can mean he, he, a lot of he, a lot of different things. Did you? Yeah. Uh, well, let's keep it PG, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what you're implying. I merely meant, did you make physical contact? Oh, all right. He's being dirty. <laughs> all I meant by it is that, in my experience, there are some types of illusions that, until you hear or feel the person you would not be able to tell that they are not, in fact, the person you are seeing. That's interesting. I don't remember if we made contact, but he's been just so weird lately. Just He gave me the cold shoulder just the other day and then stopped talking to me, and I don't know. He's very animated when he, when he mimes, and I don't know if he's practicing a new routine. I wish I knew anyone that worked with him. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell. Uh, I should have mentioned this. Uh, he's getting really into character now. He thinks he's going to try miming 24-7. What? That doesn't make any sense. I just got to slide in all like... You're, you're right. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like, what does uh, like, Boomy say? Slide in? Just slide in like Johnny Bravo style or like <laughs> not Bravo not Pokemon. <laughs> just, you know, just be like, you deserve someone who will talk back to you and will <laughs> listen. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that means what you think it means. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, and I kind of am there, like, really proud of myself. It took me, like, 20 minutes to come up with this. But I, <laughs> now I said it, I'm really proud. Um, uh, have you ever talked to a woman before? He's being very polite. What was your name again? Boomy. Boomy. No, 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 not, not you, not you. You, <laughs> the rabbit. <laughs> He's still, still happening. <laughs> My name's Boppy. I've only worked here for a decade. All right. You've worked at the carnival for a decade? Oh, yeah. The joy of my life. Every morning I wake up and I just smile and I say, thank God I'm here at this carnival. Can't think of anything better I could be doing with my life. Oh, well, now I'm embarrassed. I must have seen you a, a hundred times then. You ever seen your boyfriend perform? All the time. I try to watch every, every event at the Big Top. You must be blind. <laughs> Wait, you've worked here for 10 years and you still collect garbage around the carnival. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be doing anything else here. <laughs> this is now, easy. Now, I will say, I, I, I want to thank all of you for helping me with that heckler, especially you. What was your name again? Siggy? That's me. Siggy. And, and your name is Quentin, did I hear? Yes, Quentin. All right. Well, thank you all, Boppy, Siggy, and Quentin. Well, to be fair, they, uh, he didn't actually do shit. He points over to Quentin, uh, not Quentin, Boomy. <laughs> oh, that's uh, not true at all. I, I made the uh, <laughs> the lights. Oh, oh, that was you. Oh. Boomy was trying to help with your performance as best uh, that, that he could and oh, was also trying to encourage was, the a, audience. That was a real eyesore, if you ask me. It was like I'm sure bright. you're used to those with all the mirrors around this carnival. I'll go up to her. Look around. There's no mirrors anywhere to be seen. That doesn't. There's a hall of mirrors, isn't there? There yeah, is. Yeah. Well, there were not at the hall of mirrors. You're not there though. 
Siggy's what do you say, though, uh, Dasha? What were you saying? Yeah, Siggy's going to fly up to the mermaid and whisper, Umi's very nice. He bought me my ticket. Oh. Is he rich? Oh, uh, that's where you get in there. <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> Just repeat that. He got the ticket. Boomy, she <laughs> says, are, are you a, a man of great wealth and means? Now she remembered your name. Um can say that. I have, um, you know, wealthy in the mind. And, uh, wealthy, you know, uh, wealthy oh. in his strength. Um, she goes, oh, all right. Well, it was nice meeting you. Thank you for the light show. It really, it really brought some of the people back. So, thank you. That, that burp I just did, Boomy actually, not Boomy, Boppy actually did that burp a lot. Nice. <laughs> Are you going to sing again before the big top? Uh, yeah, I do a show every hour on the hour. After the big top extravaganza, of course. I'll probably go and, and check that out soon. It's actually starting soon. Oh, well, I was going to say that. Maybe we maybe we could stay for your next performance if it was happening shortly. But yes, the big top is happening soon. Yeah, maybe we'll um, see why don't you, you there. Come with us in the back. Well, that may be challenging given how we're getting there. Oh, how you're getting there? You could take the gondola. That is true. It actually the is the the longest go... way. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> She says, but it, it'll get you there on time. It always does. Yeah. How does she get to the big? So she say, watches she, the big she gets top transported. All the time. No, no. She gets transported in a very large bowl. That bowl that she. <laughs> oh. Yeah. She goes around Somebody places. Somebody casts Big B's hand and just lifts the bowl. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, you can I'm see. Gonna... I'll just show you on the map the Hall of Illusion. See, it's close to uh, the waterway. Uh, right here. Hmm. All right, oh, so she... you sly devil, Bobby. You you blocked off the little things from last time. I can't see them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I remember the map had some things here that the viewers can now see, which actually I'm going to... The viewers will be seeing more things happening. Um, but yes, they're blocked from you all because hmm. I realized that the map was just like, here you go, here's everything. All right, um, I'll lead you guys. Come on, we'll meet her over there. I promise you good seats, but I can't make that promise. So uh, you get yeah. what you get. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure to meet you, Palasha. I hope to hear your next performance. Thank you. And again, I appreciate everything. She really more focused on Siggy, but everyone else, she bids farewell. All right, where are you headed to? Um, big, big top. Big top, yeah. Big top, where big we top? started. Okay, yeah, you've got, you got a little bit of time. You're not, like, running there, but um, you, you, you know it starts soon. So we're going to head south, I guess. Um, as you walk along the row here of stalls, you can see all the games and food uh, stalls. There's a lot of people still here. This is only really, like, the third hour of the carnival, so it's packed, right? Because it's, like, I guess it would be... Yeah, like, so if sun went down at, like, what, I don't know, 8, it's going to be 7 or 8. It's going to be, like, 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night. So it's pretty it's pretty packed right now, the carnival. Um, do you want to just go directly to the big top? Because you can. It seems like Christian was already there. No, sorry, Quentin was there. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I got to yeah. go to work, so, yeah, I'm going right yeah. to the big top. All right. <laughs> You get to the big top, and you can see the lights coming from inside. The show is getting ready to to, uh, to start. People are filing into this big tent. You hear a very weird-sounding voice come out, uh, almost like a, a loudspeaker we're giving it, but there are no loudspeakers. Um, and, uh, Bobby, you know this voice. You've never met Mr. Uh, Light. He's the one of the owners of the big top. And it's it's very very silly, almost a uh, kitty sounding uh, voice. And he says, oh, "Come on, everybody! The big top is is gonna start soon. The extravaganza! Woo! You don't want to miss this." Siggy uh. looks disturbed, 
and uneasy, but we'll continue forward. A show you'll never uh, forget <laughs> and maybe not remember. You know that guy's into some weird shit. Um, <laughs> so Boppy is going to turn to you guys and say, I'm going to go in the back to get ready. I'll meet you guys out here afterwards. Maybe Lemon will have found uh, your barge you're looking for by then. Yeah. Very well. Have fun at work. Yeah. The joy of my life. <laughs> you headed to the big top without Boppy? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to okay. go back to the staff area, I guess. Yeah, that sounds perfect. All right, so you head into the carnival. I'll go to the group first, and then we'll jump to you, Bobby. So as you head into the big top, you can see the lights are very bright, and you can see all the uh, the illumination. With the illumination, you can see all the figures setting up hoops, and some people are getting their gear on, suits, um, things like that. There are all different sorts of performers, people breathing fire, and and they're getting ready to, to set up, and... As the crowds are filing in, those people are going backstage. All right, so you, you kind of saw a glimpse of the performers, but now as you're funneling in, everyone else is starting to get ready for the show. Uh, where do you want to sit? The, the crowd's a big circular area. Think of like a, like a circus top, a big, a big top circus. Um, do you want to sit close, as close as you can? Do you want to sit in the back? Siggy's going to want to stay near the back near an exit, probably. Okay. What about the rest of you? Um, I mean, if Siggy is purposefully going to a specific spot, I don't see why Quentin would would stray from the group. Okay. Yeah, I figured as a taller person, I'd probably go in the back anyway. Yeah. He'd sit. He'd sit down next to wherever wherever Siggy apparently like immediately like kind of went to, and just kind of looked to Siggy. You did quite well with Pelosha. That was very kind of you. Thank you. She needed cheering up. She's nice. Yeah. <laughs> she seemed it. I like commit. Yeah, we could have never worked out. I wasn't ready to commit to the life in the fishbowl tank. You know, just kind of look away. He just kind of puts his hand on on, on your shoulder. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you're you're very right. It it would have been a very hard life for you with with her. Thank you. Next time. A very wet we'll, 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 we'll find you someone. You'll find a girl soon. I've, I've already moved on. Like, it's past. Like, you know. As if it was the, her fault, not me. The, the <laughs> one who operates the carousel is quite lovely. <laughs> oh, Diana Cloppington. She's a half centaur. Or she's a centaur. Half, half centaur. <laughs> she's a, hey, you never know. She could be half centaur. <laughs> Got one horse foot. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's she like just, reverse. It just has a, a mutation. Horse top. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the lights begin to dim, and a hush falls over the crowd. And in fact, I'm going to uh, lower this carnival noise here. A hush falls over the crowd. A second later, a spotlight illuminates an elven figure sitting in a silver hoop, suspended above the center ring by silk ropes. The elf wears a dazzling suit of diamond pane mirrors and a pair of butterfly wings. His scepter is topped with spinning a spinning vein. Who welcome one and all to this evening's extravaganza? I am Mr. Light. Prepare to be delighted. And uh, this is what he looks like, everybody. I'll show it to you. He's actually quite, quite creepy. Here we go. And he's, I mean, the, I, or at least, at the very least, I know that he is a Shadar Kai. You do, yes. He does look elven, though. Okay. When Siggy sees him, she'll, like, straighten up in her seat and, like, keep her eyes on him. Quentin okay. was already straightened up in his seat. <laughs> Boomy, everyone straighten up in their seat. What do you do? <laughs> I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, well, like you know, like. Quentin up. does have like very, very good posture, like almost like oddly good posture. <laughs> yeah, so your your show is about to start, and Mr. Light hops off of the hoop, and lands with grace on the floor, and he waves his scepter in the air, and he points over to the first act, and 
you can see several uh, people in the uh, performance come into play, lights beaming on them and attractions. Um, over the course of the next, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes or so, you see a whole different slew of performers. You see uh, trapeze artists, you see fire breathers, and I'm gonna show you actually a picture of this. And you see these creatures, shadowy creatures, swarm around the top of the big top. Now, everyone seems to be having a grand old time. Here you go. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go to Boppy. You're in the back stalls here. You're with the, the uh, all the carnival attendees getting ready, preparing for their show. You see uh, a couple of notable figures. You see your partner, uh, Candlefoot, the mime. You see uh, the bugbear that we just talked about before, Burly. He's got a very large pumpkin on his head. I'll show you a picture of him, too. What do you say when you see the carnival hands getting ready? Uh, I guess I'll start getting ready, too, and I'll go over to uh, Burly and say, Hey, uh, there's somebody you guys might want to keep an eye out for. There's a kanku who's been heckling the performers. And when Burley hears that... Hold on one second. Uh, Christian, I just got your message. Sorry. Okay. No uh, I'll, I'll respond in a moment, okay? Yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> Um, so Burley hears this, his ears perk up, obviously out of the pumpkin mask. And, uh, he says, Oh, what did you say, Kenku? Yeah, actually he was using a uh, Candlefoot's voice to mess with people. And Candlefoot, when you hear this, Candlefoot goes, and I, I'm going to just say to what I'm doing, but I'm pointing at my throat. And that's what he keeps doing. So he keeps pointing at his throat, grabbing at it, and he's miming to you something. Um. Uh. I mean, we're not performing yet, buddy. Wait. He's like, the wheels are like, the cogs are really, really spinning in his yeah. head. He's like Burley, trying really hard. Burley says, I think he wants you to get his, his tools. Oh, yeah, I could get those for you. Uh. Where'd you keep him? Where'd you put him this time? He starts, like, looking around. Mr. Uh, Candlefoot is, like, very exasperated. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> We're not on stage yet. You could talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he... okay, I got it. You have a sore throat. <laughs> the the Kenku, like... Or, sorry, the, uh, the mime slumps his head down. Onto like the uh, he, there's like a, a bunch of like seats and chairs and stuff out there, and he's just like, "Come on!" <laughs> so the uh, uh, the the bugbear oh. barely says, "Go." He always leaves them in the same spot, right by his wagon. Yeah, I'll go fetch his stuff real quick. Okay, you go to the wagon. There's nothing in there. Uh, but that's normal because it's it's invisible yeah, stuff. There's, not, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. I, I pick up the invisible stuff. Pretend yeah. to bring it. With me. It's very heavy. Oh, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty strong, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my few positive stats. Um, I'll, I'll walk over to him and I'll say, Hey, uh, can you not talk? He shakes his head uh, rapidly to say yes. Uh, why can't you talk? He takes out some of the equipment from his invisible bag. He puts on what seems to be like some sort of a mask over his head. And he turns to the side so you could see the outline. And it's like he points out a very large curved nose. Is that, uh, is that like a beak? The Kenku. You're talking about the Kenku I heard using your voice. He took your voice. I knew I should have beat the snot out of that bird. And Burley says, took your voice? What does this mean? There's some strange things here at the carnival this this year. Boppy, what is going on? Um, I'll look at him and I'll say, listen, I have no idea. But if uh, my buddy here needs his voice back, I feel like I'm obligated to do something about that at the very least. He says, look, I, uh, I have to go perform. But afterwards, 
We have to talk. I have something very important to say, and it needs to be done in private. And he's, like, yelling. He has, like, only one volume. Yeah. But yeah. everybody else looks at him like, what's the secret? <laughs> and Bobby's like, maybe we should do it somewhere a little more private than this. I'm pretty sure you ruptured my eardrum just now. Okay, sorry, I apologize. And he's like, I'm going to go back into the big top now. I'll see you soon. And, yeah, Bobby would just nod and just say, and then he would look at, uh, uh, I can, I can Candlefoot. Candlefoot. I was going to say Wickfoot. <laughs> uh, looks at Candlefoot. He says, We'll figure this out, pal. We'll get your voice back. And he goes, You want a cigar in the meantime? <laughs> and he extends yeah, yeah. his hand out. Yeah, hands his hand him a cigar. <laughs> yeah. He slumps in his chair, puffs out the smoke. And you know that his normal voice is that very rich, deep, Vel velvety yeah. voice. And you could hear him almost like laughing now, but he's no no uh, sound I'm, comes out. I'm picturing uh, like Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. Yes, that's exactly it. Yep. Love that guy. Rest <laughs> in peace. <laughs> so he goes to uh, uh, smoke and, you know, you guys are hanging out chatting. The group, you see a very large, burly bugbear with a pumpkin head come, in, uh, come into the big top. And he's performing feats of strength, so he's lifting up very large objects. And in fact, he's lifting up different squashes and pumpkins, like the great pumpkin in Charlie Brown, basically. He's lifting things over his head. He's, you know, holding, holding on to, uh, uh, you know, so like moving very large objects. And he's uh, performing with the crowd. He's lifting people from the crowd up in the air. And everyone seems to love him. He's, he's been a hit. Um, and then he leaves, and you can see your friend Boppy come in. Boppy is uh, with a mime, Candlefoot. And Candlefoot is uh, not the main attraction. He's actually coming around to the stands, performing different mimicry acts. He's always putting his hand out to Boppy for the next object. So, Boppy, what do you hand Candlefoot as he reaches for you for another object? Uh, I hand him a plunger. A plunger, excellent. So he takes the plunger, and... He uh, takes it, inspects it, and uh, none of you know what this is, but he holds it out, and he holds it to Boomy. He says, or he doesn't say anything, but he presents it to you as if, you know, he's get, kind of letting you inspect it. Oh, you're muted. Yeah, I'm like, I grab, I'm like super excited, and I like pretend it's like a sword or something. Like, ah, oh, like, you know. He laughs, and he's smacking his thigh, and then he grabs it from you really quickly. And, of course, you feel nothing, right? But he grabs it from you, and he says, and he pushes it in your face. And then he laughs as it actually pushes you back all of a sudden. Oh. <laughs> You're pushed back. You felt like something squishy hit you in the face. <laughs> it's like kind of like... And it smells really bad. Yeah, you just say it probably smells. <laughs> yeah. Can I, grab, can I grab it back from him? You could try, but then he goes. <laughs> and I'm just like really like, <laughs> like upset. Like, he laughs again. And he looks at Boppy and he, he like elbows you, Boppy. And he. Yeah, Can Boppy, I ask Boppy for an object? I say, I kind of point to Boppy. Hey, give me something. You ain't part <laughs> of the act, kid. Oh. And he moves on. He moves on. Goes to Quentin. <sighs> Reach for another object, Boppy. Uh, I'll hand oh, him uh, 50 feet of rope. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> he, Wouldn't be the first time I was tied up by a mime. He first <laughs> does the classic mime where he like holds the rope taut. Yes, I'm trying to explain for the listeners. I, I It's hard, though. So he, he's trying to... Um, holds out a fake rope, right? Pretends to make it taut. And then will grab it and pull, propel himself forward one grab at a time, right? He's doing that typical mime stuff. And then he'll start to pretend to tie it. And he presents it to you, uh, Randall, to Quentin. It looked like he was tying tying something? Yeah. Um, I'll just, I'll, I'll take it and I'll um, just kind of put my arm through it and uh, like pull on the rope and like pretend to pull my arm with it. Um, and, uh, and, yeah. <laughs> He'll shake his finger at you and go, 
Mm-mm. <laughs> and he'll grab it and put it around your neck. Oh my god! Jesus <laughs> Christ! He, he cinches it like a noose. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he he laughs. He laughs. He looks at Boppy. What do you do, Boppy? <laughs> Bop, Boppy just looks at Quentin and he goes, <laughs> he he kind of smirks and he goes, you pull it. <laughs> Taking quite a dark turn. <laughs> um, do I do you feel play something along? around my neck? No, it's a, nothing there. Oh, okay. Uh, he'll he'll just play along. Yeah. And he he pretends to pull it, and you feel like you're floating now in the air. Nothing around your neck, really, but you're floating in the air, and uh, he, he makes, sticks out his tongue to pretend like he's dead as well. Like <laughs> he'll, If he doesn't feel like he's actually being strangled, he'll, he'll play along and pretend to be dead. And, just... and he claps, and he claps, and everybody around you claps as you're floating just about a foot off the air. And he takes the rope back. And he goes up to Siggy. One more object, Bobby. Do I just fall? Or <laughs> you? No, you glide back down. Oh, okay. Uh, Bobby reaches into the bag and pulls out a fly swatter. A fly swatter. No. And, he, and immediately, immediately he takes the fly swatter and bops you on the. Uh, well, actually, bops you pretty much in the whole head. <laughs> um, you feel like a mosquito bite right on your forehead as he does it. To me. Yeah. Oh, you felt a mosquito bite right in the center of your forehead, and then he hit you at the same, almost at the same time. I will very rapidly like pull my head back as I see the thing coming towards me. You He's... don't see anything coming towards you. Me. Don't, you don't see anything I coming. See his hands <laughs> moving as if to swat something, and I'm, I'll, I'll like rapidly fly back and like try to get whatever it is off my head. Gotcha. You you just feel your 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 forehead and. There's no bump there, but you kind of feel like there's a bump, like a pimple almost. But there's not. You're like feeling it. You're mm -hmm. looking. You're looking around. Is there? Is there something on my head? No, nothing there. And he he laughs. He's belly laughing. He's actually on the floor laughing, legs in the air, and no sound coming out. <laughs> and then he gets up and he continues on down the line. And you see Boppy following along, doing this till you know a group. Every every so often he stops and. Includes the group in on this. Mm -hmm. um, anything else from you, group? Do you want to do anything before Bobby leaves? I'll keep an eye on whatever's going on on the main stage. The main stage has their acts coming and going, and then at the end of the hour, you see Mr. Witch, excuse me, Mr. Light come back out, the Harlequin, uh, Mr. Light. And he will address the crowd, everybody. Well, wasn't that a great show? Did you have fun? And the crowd cheers, mostly children in the crowd, right? They're, they're cheering. They're loving it. And he says, and now we get to the final part of the extravaganza. We get volunteers from the crowd. Would anyone like to join and share one of their special talents? It's going to be fun. <laughs> I see Boomy smiling. Come on, Boomy. Show this crowd what you're what you're made of. It's Are loud in here right now, but I'd my, say uh... Boomy, you know. Yeah, I mean, sure. I'm I'm charismatic. Um, Do some stand up. Yes, we yeah. saw that quite quite well recently. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I guess I'm. Yeah. Yes. This is my chance to in impress other people in the audience. All right. So you uh, you want to perform. What do you got for us? Uh, I have like my like, war hammer or maybe I have little like little axes and I can like throw the axe at, you know, like an apple on someone's head. Ooh, okay. Um, this sounds dangerous. <laughs> or like or like at a card, or I could throw a card and like throw the axe or something like that. Throw Siggy, an you axe have a suggestion? At an the, apple on the hand someone's axe. head. The hand axe. Oh my god. <laughs> on Bob's head. That is yeah. I, just proportionately I don't think that's gonna work very well. <laughs> so a lot of people are clamoring to get chosen by Mr. Light. 
and you can see a lot of kids and you know other people in the crowd. They have got items with them that are part of their show, jugglers, things like that. And he looks around and he spots you, Boomy. He sees you standing up and everybody's trying to give you ideas. You're like, you're holding your war hammer out. You've got an axe out. And trying uh, to like maybe do a handstand. <laughs> you're trying to do something. You're like, this is what I could do. And, and to, to the group. And then Mr. Light says, oh, we've got someone in the back there. You there, young, strapping man, come to the front. Come with your troop, your entire troop. I like look around excited, like who is he talking about? He would like look behind me, um, not realizing he's talking to me. Oh, yeah, you <sighs> in the back. It'll be fun. Come on, come on down. Suppose that means us. And he looks to Siggy and he says it. I feel like at first I'd be like, no, 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 no. <gasps> oh, okay, all right, you got me. I'll come along. <laughs> Biggie does mm-hmm. not look super thrilled about having to go on stage, which is very different. Like normally, she might like she would not mind being the center of attention. You saw her in the um, cupcake eating contest. She like sang with the mermaid, but like something about this situation is not sitting super well with her. This is our chance to meet and rub elbows with Mr. Light. Hmm. I suppose you're right. Don't really want to go up there, but I suppose I will. And she'll like kind of fly there very like rigidly. Like she's not super relaxed, you can see. Step right up. Nothing to be scared of here, little one. And he looks at you um, with his Harlequin painted face and his eyes just staring right at you, Siggy. Mm-hmm. By the way, by this point, have we recovered anything from the Yes, the custard? yeah, yeah. So the okay, walk over from uh, the Swan <clears throat> Lake, Silver Song Lake, this, okay. the walk over there has allowed you to fully digest a bit more. You know, your, your, your hit points are regenerated back to full. We all took a 25-minute poop break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he it. is glaring at... Mr. Light, as she flies up with the group. Yeah, like totally. obviously glaring, or <laughs> like she's like staring him back. Like he's staring at her. She's staring right back at him. Her eyes are like squinty. Would I have noticed this? You could, yeah. I don't think she's trying to hide it. Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah. was my 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 uh, concern. Oh. She, she wears her emotions, like, on her face. You can totally see everything she's... See, like I said, like it's like Tinkerbell. Her emotions are very, like, amplified visually. As many Faye are. Okay, so, all right, so... Uh, are yeah, you all right? What do you say? Uh, I don't really answer. I just keep gliding forward, like, glaring at Mr. Light. So the three of you are mm. now in the center of the big top. All the other performers are watching from either backstage. Boppy is kind of peeking his head into the tent. And uh, the lights, spotlights are on the three of you. And the the crowd falls completely silent, waiting for something to happen. So we're all on stage right now? Yep. Yeah. I just I, I look I just kind of like like inch a little bit closer to Boomy and just kind of nudge nudge him. I believe that they're waiting for you, friend. Oh, so I kind of like dust off, you know, jacket, and then I pull out like a little like hand axe, like, and I'm only assuming the whole crowd is like, <gasps> like yes, you know, exactly, like, g- mm-hmm. gasping, and <gasps> then I pull out another one. Oh, <laughs> and I'm just like, um, I feel like all I would do at the moment is just kind of like, I'd flip one, and then I'd catch it. <laughs> okay. And I'd be like, uh, and then I'll do like two this time. I'll flip both, and I catch it again. <laughs> like I'm clearly out of my my level here. Give me a performance um, check. <laughs> Pop, he's probably like talking to Burley back to him, like, what is that idiot doing? 
I feel like I'm just trying to move around and see if what the crowd's reacting. Got a nat twenty. A nat twenty. Yes. Wow. I am. I am now. I didn't know I could do this, but I'm now juggling these hand axes. Yeah, exactly. You started with one, <laughs> then another, then you added in a third, and all of a sudden you're you're throwing these axes up in the air, catching them. People are just loving it. The crowd goes wild. Mr. Light is like, well, he didn't know he had it in him. Look at this, everyone. The juggling, juggler extraordinaire. And then and then we go to uh, to Dasha or Randall. What are your what's your job here? That's when Mr. Light pulled out the chainsaw and handed it to him. Mm hmm. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm about to like reach towards like a flame and like. Bobby, like, stop, someone stopped me. Like, no, no, no. That's we'll stop right there. Like, okay. No, he's, you're still juggling. You're still juggling. <laughs> oh, so I can't cast a <laughs> guidance <laughs> on anyone. <laughs> you're still juggling. It's you got to keep juggling. You got to keep it up. Still juggling. Great. But uh, let's see, this. Siggy. What are you doing? Siggy is like completely ignoring what's happening. She's literally just floating in midair, her arms crossed over her chest, glaring at Mr. Light. I'll I'll see this and just kind of step forward. People, please, please, uh, keep your eyes on our fantastic juggling friends, but listen to my voice. Uh, people around, please bring your eyes. I promise not to spill any lies. We are here for your smiles. We will turn up all the dials, and by the end from your seats, you shall rise. And he's gonna start, he's gonna give, uh, he's gonna give um, Boomy uh, a point of a bardic inspiration. And I'm gonna use prestidigitation to make all, out every time, uh, or it make it essentially look like the axes that he's juggling are now aflame. They're not, but he's gonna look like, they're, like I'm gonna use the create small sensory effect to basically make it look like the blades are now on fire. Right, like as they as they fly up in the air, they 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 light up with little flame. Exactly, they, yeah. yeah, yeah. They like kind of light up and then like go like extinguish as they hit his hand and then light light back up as they go back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good. So, Boomy, you don't even know you had this in you, but now the, your your axes are flaming axes. Yeah, and I feel like um, seeing this um, and seeing Siggy kind of frozen there for a second, I'm gonna kind of. Uh, stroll towards while juggling and maybe like juggle almost like in between Siggy where I like she's standing still and I'm saying I'm thinking of like the shows where they put a kid in the middle and they throw the the knives by him and you know the street you know the street performance that sounds dangerous but okay. yes <laughs> yes so please I'm... describe these shows where, where strangers <laughs> throw knives at children <laughs> you've never seen like jugglers put someone in the middle and they're juggling in between between two people I don't, I don't think, I don't think so, actually. <laughs> I feel like that was very common. I feel well, like if there was someone in the middle, it was not a child. Either way, <laughs> I'm now juggling, and it looks like Siggy's now, like, moving in between the, you know, the flames. Christian, where'd you grow like... Massachusetts? <laughs> Where is it? I thought these were common. I can't believe I'm going to find a video. There's was never... this in the back of a bar in Boston? In Boston? Like, <laughs> never, I can't believe this has never been never been discussed before. I'm gonna. There's going to be tons of videos online. Okay. Either right, way, so I'm juggling and like I'm I'm positioning the flames to look like Siggy's like weaving in between them as if she's like Yeah, so you're basically like pool. juggling but now you're moving underneath her. She's flying yeah. above you. Yeah. She is still standing while well, she's like fluttering completely static, glaring at Mr. Light and the the flames make her look like she's like hellish, like her anger is like <laughs> amplified by these flames Whoa, all around. Whoa, we've got a serious one here, folks. Come on, little one, show us your talent. Um, she will, I guess, I'm trying to think what she would do here. Does she see anything on him that is worth taking? On Mr. Light? On Mr. Light, yeah. Yes, he's as the uh, scepter of the Witchlight Monarch. Mm-hmm. That is uh, the the one I showed you in the picture that he's carrying. Mm -hmm. There's so, I, I mean, if you were worried about maybe taking Boppy's cigars, uh, 
this would be very hard to do. He's holding it in his hand and he's using it to like accentuate every motion and and point he, to things and to the crowd. Stole my and, cards. Do a magic trick. <laughs> Come on, little one. Lost your voice? She will. Erupt. Or have you lost something else? Okay, that that's it. She will. <laughs> Have <laughs> one of the axes from midair, and it looks like it's too big for her to hold. But she looks absolutely like murderous now, like a terrifying little fairy. And she's gonna. Um, oh, look out, everybody! She's got an axe. Uh, she is going to look like she's about to maybe juggle it, but she's going to hurl it at Mister Light. Ooh, roll an attack. Is there is there any moment to interrupt her? <laughs> I don't think so. She's also flying in the air. Like, so is there no. hesitation here, or is this is this like a <laughs> no, no hesitation? Go, go for she's it. Not gonna, like, she's not gonna like try to strike to kill him, but is he wearing like a cape of some kind? Uh, I'll show you the picture again, but he's wearing like a clown, a harlequin outfit, and it's got bells and tassels all over it. Uh huh. So maybe she'll try to like pin. Yeah him to the ground somehow like pin a piece of his clothing to the ground with the axe like she's not trying to like hurt him necessarily but she's trying to pin him in place and intimidate him so well boppy uh, is uh, looking forward to uh escorting the next group of adventurers through uh <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a attack just like a, an, a, a dexterity or? yeah let's say dexterity it's thrown it could be either strength or dex i assume yeah. your dex yeah for sure. Uh, my dex is... Watching a ton of people juggling, doing exactly what I described. <laughs> throwing daggers right at each other? <laughs> Just throwing clubs in between each other. Uh, 19. 19. Nice. All right. So, you, what were you aiming for? I was aiming, maybe if, like, there's that, like, ruffle on his, like, around his ankle, maybe she would, like, try to pin that to the ground so he can't move his... I don't know if that ruffle is like enough of material to do that, but his yeah. sleeves are big. Maybe you could pin it against like one of the, I don't know. I'd imagine there'd be like, you know, crates or something. He's still like a platform that he's been standing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah, could do that. do that. Try to pin him down or pin him to something. Sure. And so you, you hit the. She has another action she'll do after. Okay. Well, at this point, yeah. yeah one action first. So you, you, pin him uh his his sleeve to like the podium or the the platform that's standing behind that's behind him and everyone in the crowd goes <gasps> and everything stops no one makes a noise or a sound he looks a little confused and puzzled and he kind of smiles and he looks a little bit embarrassed i guess that he was maybe caught a, a surprise by this and he looks out to everybody and um he'll wave his scepter out and hit the axe, and when he hits the axe, butterflies fly out of it. It becomes butterflies. The whole axe basically disintegrates, and butterflies come out of it, and he sparkles and turns around. The entire crowd goes wild, and he says, Wonderful! Terrific! The traveling axe throwers! And uh, everyone's cheering for you all. Am I still right. going? What's that? Am I still going? Yeah, or... you're still you're still chugging. Now you have two axes <laughs> instead of three, and the crowd is loving it. Um, well, I just look bored. It's the mood of the entire carnival changes again. Everything was a bit dimmer before you got in here. Remember at the lake, everything's very very vibrant again. Everything looks looks sharp and and colorful. You know this is a freak accident too. The next time you try to juggle, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Every yeah, you rolled a nat twenty. <laughs> Only Polesha was here. So, at uh, this point, I, uh, okay, good. Let me just yeah give a recap of what's happening. So at this point, the crowd is starting to dissipate. Mister Light bids everyone farewell, and that the uh, the next time he'll see them is at the crowning of the Witchlight Monarch, and then they all start to leave. Mister um, Light will exit before any of the other performers, as is standard. Bobby, you and all the rest of the performers have to come out for your bows, and then he's going to be leaving first. No one is allowed to approach him, so all of your 
co-workers are giving him a respectful space. What do you do, everybody? Can I fly after him? You could, yeah. So you start to fly at him, and Bobby, you know this is a bad idea. Nobody's supposed to leave before Mr. Light. Well, I don't really like Siggy, so uh, whatever. <laughs> That's great. So, Siggy, you're flying right at him, and you're you're got tunnel vision, right? You're like looking right at Mr. Light, and it's at this point that someone interposes the two of you, a clown. Oh God! That you remember very well. No, no, no. Oh. oh, I forgot his name. I had it written down. Thacko. Yep, that's it. Yep. This hideous monstrosity. Oh God! Oh steps no! Steps in front of you, and he grabs you midair, and he pulls you down, and he looks at you, and he just shakes his head. He's got a pipe in his mouth, just like it is there, right? And he blows bubbles out of it, and and he uh, starts to take you uh, towards the patron entrance that you came in. Give me an athletics check if you'd like to, or uh, opposed athletics or acrobatics check if you'd like to get out of this. But Do we see this? Yeah, you all see this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> would. I definitely would like. I'm assuming he grabs Ziggy like rough. Like this isn't like a gentle. Type no. Of... Yeah. So after okay. seeing that, I would definitely like inch, like move towards Zach and be like, "Let her go." Um, yeah, Siggy, Siggy's not fighting back. She looks like she's frozen with fear, and she just looks over at, like, like either Quentin or Boomy or whoever's eye she can catch, and her eyes just look completely terrified. He's, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna start walking up as well, um, uh, and he's gonna, he's gonna just look, look dead in the eyes of the clown. Excuse me, have you heard the joke about the very poor clown? Is this the what is it the the Watchman <laughs> joke? <laughs> what was his name? What's the name of the clown? No, no, it's the it's not. Oh, okay, it's, it's just a very bad joke. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, gotcha. <laughs> uh, or sorry, I, no, actually, um, uh, that that's not my joke. Um, but uh, he's gonna he's gonna say, um, excuse me, what did a tiger call the clown in the circus tent? His happy meal. And I'm going to cast uh, uh, Tasha's hideous laughter on oh my the God, clown. You guys are going to get kicked out of the circus. What the He's hell? like brutally grabbing this small fairy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Boppy is not associating with any of you during this. It doesn't do any damage. It just takes him out of commission. <laughs> What's yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he can't t- this toss is the this one after. guy I said, don't mess with him. <laughs> he messed with us. Save DC, it's, it's a, uh, oh, never mind, never mind. Uh, yeah, it's important. He rolled very high. So he's going to grin at the joke and blow bubbles out of his pipe. And then he's gonna grab you two by the collar and escort the two of you out. At this point, can I grab the the clown oh my god like by the <laughs> collar he's the head of security what are you doing poppy's like i'm gonna get fired i'm gonna get fired <laughs> I, I i feel like i would grab the clown now uh, i don't know if i could do like a strength check or yeah poppy's a... just gonna look away from you all he's gonna look at burly and uh candlefoot and say uh, i think we had a conversation to finish let's go bow back yeah, you're right. We should have that conversation. <laughs> yes. Right now. No one should come with us. <laughs> all right, Burley, stop talking. You're not doing us any favors. You all heard that, by the way. You hear, yeah. you hear <laughs> as you, you're on the opposite side of the big top. It's really like 100 feet away from him. You heard that. And uh, Thacko is escorting the two of you out the entrance. And Boomy, you're about to grab Thacko from the back. When you hear someone from outside come out and say, "Quick, at th- the dragonfly, there's a there's a dwarf, he's in danger." Um, I believe that's your cue, Mister Thacko. Aren't you the head of security? He smiles, and he said, "He says to you, 
ain't my problem. And then uh, he'll drop the two of you off. Boomy, if you want to grab him, you can at this point. Um, did he, he drop them? Yeah. Um, no, after seeing he, that he dropped both of them, I would, I would kind of stop and be like, you made a wise decision. Oh, my and God. Like, kind of <laughs> pretend to, like... You yeah, you better to, like, run. I'm ready to... <laughs> We are Saved level by the bell, one. it seems, you know? <laughs> level one, and this guy's clearly like the CR8 fight. <laughs> well, uh, he'll he'll uh, wave to you all. Ta-ta. And he's going go to over. head back to the uh, staff area. I'm going to go over to Quentin and, and Siggy and make sure they're all right. Um, Siggy's sure like on the floor, like rocking back and They're forth. not like hurt or anything. Uh, uh, he's gonna immediately as that when Stacko leaves, he's gonna he's gonna drop to a knee and just kind of like like put a hand on Siggy's hand. Uh, are you all right? That, that looked quite unpleasant. Siggy looks like she's having some sort of like PTSD flashback moment. There's a lot going through her brain right now. She's not really listening to you. She's kind of like zoned out, like like kind of just sitting there hugging her knees. Um, her wings are a little bit droopy. She doesn't look too happy. She'll just shrug her shoulders. Burley says to you, Bobby, Hey, come on! We gotta go help that person on the dragonfly ride! Alright, come on. We'll have our conversation, April. Let's go. Let's go! And he starts to run. Heavy, uh, you hear the heavy thud as his boots make a big footprints that you are, you basically can stand both your feet in. And he, uh, he's running towards the dragonfly ride. All right, yeah. the dragonfly ride is where is it here? Isn't that way by up by the carousel? Yeah, right here. Yep, right here. Dragonfly rides. All right, so I think this is where we're going to pause for this week. Um, tune in next time to find out what danger awaits the group at the dragonfly rides. Um, Burley is now with the group. He's headed with Boppy, and so. As you're standing outside the big top, you see Burly, the pumpkin head wearing uh, bugbear, and Boppy marching out towards the dragonfly rides. I assume you'll follow? Yeah, I feel like once I know Siggy and Quentin are okay, help them dust off the dust, mm -hmm. um, I would say we should go. Okay. So yeah, then that's where we'll pick Let's up. get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So that's where we'll pick it up next time. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for everyone in the chat tonight. It was pretty lively. A lot of people making fun of us, which is good. I love that. <laughs> There's some nice improv, too, from everyone here in the group, I must say. Bravo. Excellent job. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick this back up in two weeks, which will be... Let's see the calendar here. Two weeks is going to be November 11th. That's when we'll come back uh, with Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. I have a lot of things streaming. You can check out all my playlists on my YouTube channel, Tabletop Bob. And we will see you all on the tabletop. Good night, everyone. Night. Night, Good everybody. Night. night.